Welcome, everyone. Um, there's one word that you're going to hear a lot today, so I'm going to give it to you right up front. Multiplication. The Lord promises multiplication. In fact, when I uh, left this morning, got up, and I brought my NIV, which is what I always bring, I thought I've got to run back in the house and get my Good News Bible because my Good News Bible is my dad's. And uh, don't read from it a lot, but if he didn't multiply, I wouldn't be here. Amen? Amen? We all have a DNA of multiplication. If you think about it, there were two cells that united. By the time we were born, we were comprised of 26 billion cells. In nine months, we went from two to 26 billion. And I'm looking out at all of you, and it's not a weight issue, but you all have 100 trillion cells. We multiply. We multiply. Amen? He made us to multiply. And our message today is going to come from Matthew. I'm going to reference Matthew 14 first, but we're going to be in Matthew 15. Um, in Matthew 14, Jesus was by the Sea of Galilee, and uh, there were large crowds, and uh, he had been preaching for a long time. The disciples wanted to go home. And, um, but he had different plans. He wanted to stay, and he got fishes and loaves and fed 5,000. And that was just a men count. They didn't count the women and children, but 5,000. And then in Matthew 15, he goes on, and he feeds 4,000. 4,000. So let's read from Matthew 15, beginning on verse 32. Again, this is from the Good News Version. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I feel sorry for these people because they have been with me for three days and now have nothing to eat. I don't want them, I don't want to send them away without feeding them, for they may faint on their way home. The disciples asked him, Where are we to find enough food in this desert to feed this crowd? How much bread do we have, Jesus asked. Seven loaves, they answered, and a few small fish. Jesus ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves and the fish, gave thanks to God, broke them, and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and had enough. Then the disciples took up seven baskets full of pieces left over, the number of men who ate were 4,000, not counting women and children. Then Jesus sent the people away, got in a boat, and went to the territory of Megadon. The Lord promises multiplication if we're faithful and we give it away. Amen? Give it away. We need to give it away. If we are faithful and give it away, he promises multiplication. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just humbly come before you, Lord. Lord, I just ask that you move me out of the way, that you open hearts and you open minds and give people what they already have today, their DNA of multiplication, so we can all go forth as we are called to and give it away and multiply in the blessed name of Jesus Christ. Amen. There's a... Uh, a story of a, a man, a, a pastor, who was preaching in a church, and it wasn't doing very well. He and his wife were struggling, um, not a lot of people in church, struggling financially. And uh, one day he was in his office praying, and his phone rang, picked up the phone, and it was a pastor from an adjacent community. And uh, he asked the, this visiting pastor if he would come and preach at his church in about six months. And he said, yeah, I'll be happy. I love to share the Word of God. I will share the Word of God any day, any time. Just tell me when and where. And if you've got a series going on, tell me what it is. I'll be happy to plug in. So um, they went on and spoke for a while. And the, uh, the pastor who had invited him said, how much do you, do you charge? What's your pulpit fee? And he said, no, no, I don't do it for money. I do it for the king. I just love to share the good news. That's what I like to do. That's what my heart is called to do. He said, okay. 
So time went on, and he was preparing and preparing and organizing and getting everything ready for his message and got his wife, and they got there early and pulled into the parking lot. The parking lot was already half-filled, and people were coming in, and they were praising and praying, and it was amazing. It was just amazing. And he got in. He was so excited, sat in the front row, and was uh, being prepared to come up and, and share the good news. And the, the senior pastor of the church gave all the announcements and prayed, and then he called up a, a missionary that they were sponsoring in Africa. So the missionary came up, and he was sharing, he was giving an update how the Lord was working. The Lord was just working in this little village. People were saved, and people were coming to Christ, and there were baptisms. There was amazing things happening, and they were actually even going to the next village and the next village. It was just growing and growing. And he said, but, you know, we do have bad news. Our van broke. And without our van, it's kind of complicated. But the Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. So missionary got off the stage, and the pastor went up to share, share the message. And he shared a powerful message, just a powerful message. When he was done, the audience just gave him a standing applause, and they were just so excited at the word that he brought that day. And uh, he finished, and he was looking out at the audience, and senior pastor came up and said, you know, we've taken a, a love offering and wanted to give you this love offering. <clears throat> so he's in front of the crowd, and he took the check, and he looked down at it, and it was $7,000, which was the amount of debt that he and his wife had for the church. Amen? So he's looking down, he's thinking, wow. And the Lord says, give the check to the African missionary. He's like, are you outside your mind? I'm not... <laughs> I've been, I've been practicing for six months. I've been preparing. They gave me a stand. Give the check to the African missionary. You are crazy, Lord. This is my money. My wife and I need it. It's the number we needed. I am all good. Thank you so much. Third time. He loves threes, doesn't he? Give the check to the African. So he said, fine. I'll do it. So he walked around, and he found him, and he gave the check to the African missionary, and he hadn't spoken to his wife yet. He didn't want to speak with his wife because he just gave away $7,000, and they've got debt. <clears throat> so um, he and his wife were walking out to the car, and one of the congregation members uh, came up and said, hey, we're going out for pizza. Would you like to, to come and have some pizza with us? And he's thinking, yeah, of course I would. I don't have any money, and I just gave away seven. I'd be happy to. So they went, and they sat down at the restaurant, and he's sitting across from this gentleman, and the gentleman was talking to him. They were having great dialogue about the word. And he said, may I ask you a personal question? He said, how much did we give you? What was the check? And he said, well, I don't know. I gave it to my wife. Let me go talk with her. So he went down. And he's lying to his wife, faking like he's talking to her about that. Came back and sat down. And he said, yeah, I'm not sure. She left it in the car. I just don't know. And the guy said, well, it, it's fascinating because nine months ago, the Lord told me that we'd be having a pastor speak in nine months. And on that day, I've got the date right on the check here, I was supposed to write this pastor coming in in nine months a check for $70,000. And that would be ten times the value. Is that close? Amen. Amen. The Lord promises multiplication if we give it away. All we need to do is be faithful and give it away. So, as I preach, I always go back, anchor in the Word, so I'll share a couple verses, explain and apply, and continue on through. So I'm going back to uh, beginning on verse 29 out of Matthew 15. Jesus left there and went along the Sea of Galilee, then went up on the mountainside and sat down. Great crowds came to him, bringing the lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others. They laid them at his feet, and he healed them. The people were amazed when they saw the mute speaking, the crippled made well, the lame walking, and the blind seeing. And they praised the God of Israel. The Lord heals. That's why he came. He came to heal us. He came to restore us to him. Restoration. He came to bring us back to him. God heals. And we are here 
to bring people, to bring the good news, to help healing. So when we look at this scripture, I want to talk for a moment about geography, because this geography is really important. It's a metaphor for what's going on. If you look at Israel, Israel is tall north and south and narrow east and west, okay? And Jesus was up on the mountainside in the northern part of Israel by the Sea of Galilee. I'll get there in a second. There are two seas in Israel. The one in the south is called the Dead Sea. It's the lowest place in the entire world. It's the lowest place on earth. The lowest. It's broken. It's dead. It, it gets all this water, this fresh, vibrant water, and it keeps it all for itself. Doesn't give anything away. Keeps it all for itself. Lowest point. It's symbolic of those people who are broken. They're at the lowest point. They're crippled. They're blind. But in the north is the Sea of Galilee. Now, this is where Jesus was preaching, on the east side of the Sea of Galilee. And the Sea of Galilee is vibrant. It's a beautiful body of water. And it gives all this water away. It produces fresh fish, and people live off the fish. And the water flows out into farmland. And there's farmland and vineyards, and it's all vibrant because the Sea of Galilee is giving the water away. And when it gives it away, it multiplies fish, plants, vineyards. Amen? Amen. Continuing in verse... 32, Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for these people. They have already been with me three days and had nothing to eat. I do not want them to send them away hungry or they may collapse. Now, he had already fed 4,000. Now he's feeding 5,000, and he's got compassion. And part of his compassion in this message is to feed them food earthly food, right? Bread and fish. But really what he wants is to give them spiritual nourishment. Amen? That's what he wants. He wants us to have spiritual nourishment. I can remember years ago, um, I was called to be a pastor at Crossroads, which is in downtown Denver. It's a homeless shelter. And um, Crossroads had closed a few years before I was invited to go there. And it closed. It had all kinds of mess going on, just drugs, alcohol. And they closed it because they didn't know what to do. It was just, it was not a good place. But Dr. Flagg wanted to reopen Crossroads, but he wouldn't do it without the Lord. He thought, you know, we feed people and we let them have sh but we need to get a church in there. And... Um, long story, but by, by, hap, by God's happenstance, I met Dr. Flagg, and he invited me to come to Crossroads. And again, it had just been closed. It was just a mess. And we reopened it back up. And um, the first week I was there, they said, well, we've got Bible study on Monday night. So I went to Bible study, and there were two people there, me and the Lord. <laughs> Nobody was there. No one was there on Monday night Bible study. And uh, the next Sunday was church, and we set up 20 uh, folding chairs. Actually, Reggie Banks, who used to be a member here, uh, 20 folding chairs, 17 men came. Uh, one brought a crack pipe, um, preached to, to 17 men with a bedroom clock radio. Four years later, God multiplies. God, did I tell you that God multiplies? When we are obedient, the Lord multiplies 700 men per week. Amen? Amen? Praise God. When we are obedient and faithful, the Lord multiplies. And it wasn't just about numbers. I mean, people's lives were transformed. They were getting off of addictions, alcoholism, drug addictions. The Lord is awesome largest uh, church in all of the Intermountain West for the Salvation Army. The Lord is amazing because he wants multiplication. He wants multiplication, and he can multiply anywhere. Continuing on in, in verse 
33. His disciples answered, Where could we have bread in this remote place to feed such a crowd? How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked. Seven, they replied, and a few small fish. So, <laughs> He, he had just fed thousands, and now they forgot. Amen? I mean, he gives, he gives me blessings in my life, and a week later I forget that they came from him. Maybe I think they were for me, or maybe he's not capable this week. Amen? Me of little faith. Me of little faith. I can remember one time I was at Crossroads, and things were going well. We were up to a couple hundred, and he was just blessing, because it wasn't about me. I'd... I can't do much, but with him, all things are possible. Amen? So he said to me, um, one of our, our parishioners from day one was a man named Ray, Vietnam vet, in a wheelchair. And he was just an encourager and loved God, and knew every song, and you know, was in the front row with every church service. And the Lord said, put healing hands on Ray so he can walk. So me of little faith... I said, Lord, <laughs> I can't do that. I said, if I put healing hands on Ray and pray over Ray and tell him that he's going to be able to walk, and then he can't, I'm going to look bad. I could cry saying that, right? <laughs> so we talked for a few days, and he probably told me three times at least. So one day I went to Ray, gathered a few men who just love God, and I prayed boldly with all authority in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, the next day I went back to do Bible study and Ray was gone. I said, wow. I don't know where he went, but he's gone. Kept on preaching and a few months later, we had a row right down the middle. I finished up my, my message on Sunday and this guy started walking down the middle row. <laughs> It was a Vietnam vet. His name was Ray. He said, yeah, you prayed over me, and the next day I could walk, so I left. <laughs> he went to the promised land. <laughs> Amen? Me of little faith. And the disciples, they had little faith. But he always provides for us. I mean, in there we can relate it also, relate me or, or this to, to the loaves, right? He had loaves and fishes. Loaves are of wheat, wheat. And in John 12 and 24, Verily, verily, I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls on the ground and dies, it remains only one seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. I needed to die to myself and be born anew in Christ. Amen? Or Ray wouldn't walk. All I had to do was die to myself, get over myself and my ego and looking good. I'm not going to look good. I mean, my hair's probably all messed up already. <laughs> you can laugh. It's okay. I know I am not blessed with hair. <laughs> so when, when we relate to, to the wheat, again, when we die to ourselves, just like a seed, and that seed is like wheat, it produces a harvest of 30, 60, 100-fold in return. Wow, that's a pretty good return on investment, isn't it? 30, 60, 100-fold in return. Again, I'm going to stick with crossroads. When, when we were one Bible study and then one church service and then two church services and two Bible studies and a celebrate recovery and things just kept on expanding and I'm small, I was getting tired. And um, one day the Lord said to me, you can do more. I was like, come on. Are you kidding me? I've got two church services, two Bible studies, two celebrate recoveries. We've got hundreds of people in church. I can't do more. I even said to him, Kath, the priests, I mean, they only do like one service a week, man. I'm working hard. I, dude, I am really, really working hard. And he said it three times, you can do more. He said, I want a Sunday or a Monday church service. And I've never done this before and I've never done it again because it doesn't work. So I'm just going to advise you don't try it. I was plea bargaining with the Lord. I said, well, I'll do Monday. <laughs> I will do Monday, but I'm going to give you a Bible study, not a church service. Because a Bible study is easier on me. Because once again, 
It's all about me. He said, did he, I don't think he said anything. So I started with the Bible study. So I went in uh, two weeks out, put up a couple flyers, said we're going to do a Bible study on Monday. And um, the Lord brought 100 people. I don't know if you've ever tried to do a Bible study with 100 people, but it's impossible. So we had a church service <laughs> on Mondays. Amen? Amen? I, I, I'm learning as I get older not to argue because I always end up losing, which means I win. Amen? Amen? Um, continues in verse 35. He told the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then he took seven loaves and the fish, and when they had given thanks and broke them, gave them to the disciples, and in return they gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. After the disciples picked up the seven basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over, the number of those who ate was 4,000 men besides the women and children. Sometimes we think we're not enough. Anybody? But in his hands, we're more than enough. We are more than enough in his hands. More than enough. He can take our time, our talents, our treasure, multiply it. All we have to do is give it to him. Uh, time. I mean, this week, I spent time alone in the Word with the Lord on this message. And I could have not shown up today. And I would have been filled with the message. But he told me to show up. Because now it's multiplying. You can't take it back. You might actually do something with this message. You might share it with somebody. Because it's multiplying. My time is worth something. Because my time is his time. And when I use my time wisely, amen, he can multiply our time. Because now it's multiplied times 100, 200, 300 by the end of the day. And then you'll share it with somebody who will share it with somebody. Or our talent. Um, if you look at the NFL, the NFL, the average size player is six foot two, 250 pounds. That's an average, right? So a lot of guys are bigger. 6'2", that's, I don't know, somewhere up here. And 250, that's the average size. So somebody who's 5'8", and 165 pounds can't have much talent, right? Right? Because he's just a little guy. He's like David or somebody, right? He had seven brothers that were linebackers. And he, but Philip Lindsay, CU, right? Right? hometown boy, now playing in the NFL over 100 yards, two consecutive games, he can multiply us. He can use our talents because we all have talents. I'm going to talk about that. We all have talents. We are all unique and diverse, but we are all gifted with talents from the Lord. Amen? And our treasure, um, that, that pastor, he got a treasure, right? He had $7,000, and that was all that he needed. And he gave it away. And he got 10 times as much. We had a guy at Crossroads one time. We had to sign people in, and uh, just because it was a homeless shelter, and they'd come and sign in. This one guy came in with his wallet one day, and he opened up his wallet, and uh, he dug down the corner, you know, inside the wallet, and he pulled out this dime, and he said, I found this this week. I've been saving it all week to put it in the tithing basket. In God we trust. Amen. The Lord promises multiplication of all of our time, our talents, and our tithing. Verse 39. After Jesus had sent the crowd away, he got into a boat and went to the vicinity of Magadan. <laughs> Be still and know that I am Lord, right? He wants to spend time with us. 
And after doing all that work, he just went with the Father and spent quality time because he wants us to pray and talk and listen to him. So he went to re-energize and refuel. It's a last little paragraph sentence, but it's important because he wants a relationship with everyone here. And the best way to have that relationship is to spend time with the Father, reading the Word, spending time in prayer, and listening to him. So the big idea, I don't know if you've got it, but it's all about multiplication. It's multiplication. If we're faithful and we give it away, it multiplies. And this is throughout Scripture. I mean, it's just not here. We can go back to Genesis. Uh, Genesis 12, he will make a great nation. Uh, Genesis 16, I will greatly multiply your descendants. So there are too many to count. Multiply. Too many to count. That's a good problem. Acts 12 and 24, grow and be multiplied. Hebrews 6 and 14, I will surely bless you and I will surely multiply you. The Lord wants multiplication everywhere. The Lord wants multiplication here. He wants each one of us to go forth and share the good news and multiply. Amen? That's what we are called to do, the Great Commission, Matthew 28. We are called to go forth and make disciples in our own unique way, whether it's, it's serving homeless on Colfax, whether it's preaching, whether it's worshiping, no matter what, we all are gifted. We all are gifted, and he calls us all to go give it away. You know, Jesus started, obviously, one, and he picked 12, and today there's 2.5 billion. It works, doesn't it? He wants it here. He wants the same thing here. He wants the same thing everywhere. If each one of us went and got 12, oh my, need a bigger building. So going back to the beginning for a moment, we are God's creation. We are God's creation. Our DNA was made to multiply. Two cells to 26 billion cells to 100 trillion cells. Our DNA is for discipleship and sharing the good news. Each one of us has talents. I've referenced that. And I want to talk about those talents for a moment. Now, I don't know your talents. You know your talents, and God knows your talents. In the, the book Contagious Christian, it identifies six talents that we all can have. And typically, we're gifted with one or maybe two, okay? But we all have them. Because some people think, well, I'm not worthy. I'm not capable of expanding the kingdom. We're all worthy. We are all capable. Some of you might be direct. Some of you may be direct communicators. Um, Peter, on the day of Pentecost in Acts 2, was pretty direct. He was in Jerusalem, um, fellow Jews and others. In Acts 2, verse 38, and he said this boldly. Peter said to them, each one of you must repent from your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And again, he's talking to Jews. You all must repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ so that your sins will be forgiven and you will receive God's gift, the Holy Spirit. For God's promise has made you and your children and to all who are far away, all who the Lord, our God, calls to himself. Peter made his appeal to them, and with many other words, he urged them, saying, save yourselves from punishment on this wicked people. Many of them believed this message and were baptized. And about 3,000, wait, he multiplied. One guy spoke, and 3,000 came to Christ. Amen? One. 
and 3,000. Is that a good return on investment? We are all capable. And some of you may be direct. I, I can be direct, especially if you get me alone. I can be really direct in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of you may be direct. You might be bold like Peter, or you could be intellectual like Paul in Acts 17. We've got a senior pastor. <laughs> He's kind of intellectual. Anybody? Right? He goes deep in the Word, deep, deep in the Word. Some of you may be intellectual, or some might be, be testimonial. Uh, I'm testimonial, because, I don't know, someday you'll learn my story, but once I was lost, prodigal, but now I am found. Amen. Have you ever heard the song Amazing Grace? They wrote that about me. It's all about me, all about me. Ray, Ray could do testimony. Yeah, once I, I was in a wheelchair from Vietnam, but the Lord healed me. So some, may be te some of you may have a story. In fact, I know some of your stories, and they're good stories. Share your story, because you didn't do it. I didn't do it. Believe me, when I was lost, I couldn't do anything. Amen? Came to me in a dream and changed my life overnight. Changed my life overnight. Relieved me from all my pain and brought me to him. Some might be interpersonal. We kind of missed interpersonal in the uh, parking lot today without Pastor Derek, right? Because <laughs> he's interpersonal. I mean, people pull up in their cars and he's shaking and hugging. And Well, he's interpersonal. A lot of you are interpersonal. I mean, when I first came here, everybody was hugging me. A lot of people who are interpersonal, sharing God's love in that, that way of touch, just welcoming people or verbally welcoming people, praying for them. Invitational, like the Samaritan woman in John 4, our creators and ushers. Awesome. I mean, we're a seven-touch church, and they're all over people, inviting, welcoming, bringing, telling them to come back. Or the sixth one, serving, like Tabitha in Acts 9. When I think of her, I think of, anybody ever heard of a lady by the name of Mother Teresa? Oh, was she a servant? I mean, I, I tried to find out how many lives she, I don't think you can calculate how many lives she touched. But what I did learn is um, her missions of charity had 4,500 sisters in 133 countries. Did they multiply? From one little old lady to 4,500 sisters in 130. You can't even count the number of lives that were affected from generation to generation. So can I ask for a moment if you would please uh, close your eyes? I would like you to think of at least one person who's a family member or a friend that doesn't know Jesus. Maybe you've got two, three, four. And if you're willing to use your gifts and talents to multiply the kingdom for that person or somebody that you don't even know, if you're willing to use your talents, your God-given talents, Please raise your hand. <laughs> Amen. If you're willing to be a disciple, if you're willing to do what our Lord commands each and every one of us to do, that he will do through you, he will use you like those loaves and fishes to maybe bring thousands of people or hundreds of people or tens of people. If you're willing to be a disciple, to share the good news in whatever gift you have. Please stand. <laughs> He's smiling. And I'm crying. Because that's what he wants. That's what he wants for each and every one of us. Because when we give it away, it multiplies. We save one who saves one who saves one. Actually, he saves one, sorry. Who saves one who saves one, it multiplies. If you'd like to today, the purple table, 
We've got a sign-up sheet if you'd like to be a disciple, join a community group, lead a community group. Please engage and sign up. We're going to be talking about that more in the upcoming weeks and sharing opportunity to come in for, for training and, and all kinds of things relative to multiplication, discipleship, and community groups. Because we have a big church with small communities sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just humbly come before you today. Lord, we thank you to hear your word, to know your word, to see what Jesus has done and to see what Jesus is doing and to see what Jesus is going to do through this church, through your people, Lord. Just be with us, guide us, give us strength to use our talents, each one of us, individuals, and collectively, we will make a huge difference in multiplying your kingdom. We are kingdom multipliers, Lord. We say all of this in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, the name above all names, Jesus Christ. And all God's people said,